Hello everyone and welcome to episode 19 of the Rapid Rating Climb series on chess.com where I am going for 2000 ELO because that is what my official English Chess Federation like over the board rating is and therefore I figure it should be about that on chess.com rapid. My opponent starts with the Sicilian defense and we are going A3, the A3 Sicilian. The previous episode was in this exact defense with this exact move order. And if you've watched that video, you know the move is B4. That's what A3 is setting up. And we are trying to gambit this pawn for free. But we are then going to expand into the center because C3 will come with an attack on the knight. And we'll try and claim compensation for that pawn. Our opponent, however, does not take. He goes knight F6. And generally, the idea is, because is is to push b5 to attack the knight because the problem is you can't go knight c3 to defend your pawn because after takes takes knight takes you now cannot play c3 to go d4 right now maybe you can go knight c3 takes 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 and e5 because the knight now has to vacate the center so we control all the knight's forward movement has to go back to g8 and maybe we can claim that's good for us, but we are a pawn down in that position. So far better, I believe, is b5, attacking the knight. This game will be added not only to the rapid rating climb playlist, but also the games in the A3 Sicilian playlist. And this opening you may recognize from Gotham Chess because he plays that himself a lot of the time. And also recommends it in his Chessley course, which I would recommend to get a basic understanding of the opening. However, he doesn't cover everything. And if you want to like really get a grip of the opening, you do have to play it a lot yourself and watch practical examples. So even if you already have that course or are thinking about getting it, I would recommend you watch my videos to see how I would recommend playing in sort of weird lines, which often occur because it's a weird opening, right? Like, why am I just throwing pawns forward on the queen side like this? So, okay, b5 was played to dislodge the knight so that we can go e5, right? We could go knight c3 to defend the pawn, but then d5. I don't want to allow that, so we're going to push and see where this knight goes. This knight, I don't like... The fact that he brought it to a5 i think b8 was better because here it's just stranded like we control all of its movement and it can't go to b7 because there's a pawn there and if he goes b6 knight b b6 knight b7 that looks very ugly so okay knight d5 we can play c4 to kick the knight again the knight will it could go to f4 but then d4 will come with a tempo on the knight. So realistically after c4, knight c7 is kind of forced. And that just looks great for us. I think we could probably go d4 in that position. To try and strike in the center. So let's do it. We are really kicking his knights around at this point. We could play this to attack this knight. But if the knight moves, then the pawn's... Then his other knight is defended by the queen. Or he could just go b6. I don't see the point. d4 looks good to me. After pawn takes, queen takes. Knight e6 attacks the queen. Maybe this. Then d6. Here. Hmm. What might be good... Oh, here, 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 then knight to be free is a fork of the queen and the knight, though. So, I think I'm going to go knight f3. And my point is, after d6, I think I want to play queen to a4. I want to play queen a4, attacking this knight. My point was, if knight to e6, then the queen can't defend the knight and the pawn. So after takes, he'd have to take back with the pawn. And I feel like his structure's a bit bad there. 
So that was my idea. Now we just develop, takes, takes. What about this? Here takes, takes, takes. Can't go to C6 because his knight controls that. So D4. If takes, then takes, then we're good. If d4 takes, takes, queen takes. What about bishop to b2? That looks pretty appealing. We might go d5, but... I don't think I'm worried about d5. I think we can probably play d3. Or... Maybe something along those lines. This is such a strange position. Like... These are the kind of positions that the a3 Sicilian gets you. Just very, very odd. And there's a very good chance that I haven't handled this amazingly. Because... I don't even recognise these positions. Like, what even is this? But we'll find out in the post-game analysis anyway. Here I don't want to allow this. Now if he takes me and then bishop takes and then he takes the pawn then our bishop's defending anyway. If he takes here, knight takes, bishop takes, rook g1, bishop b7. I feel like we're a lot better. But if he takes we could just take back with the bishop. And not allow g2 to hang. So that's another advantage of putting our bishop on b2. Because it helps with the defense of this. I don't really want to take him. Because then after queen takes. He's probably going to queenside castle. And I'm just helping him develop. I don't really want to do that. So we're not going to take. Again if I could get d4 in successfully. That would be great. But I don't see an ideal situation. One of the things that's going for us, though, is that his knight is stranded on a5. e6. Is he playing for this? Maybe. If we push. If we push and takes and takes and takes and takes... I think the opening of the D file helps us. If we take, Queen takes. Bishop E5. Queen D7. Knight C3. Now if we take him bishop takes, bishop g7, rook g8, that looks a bit dubious, because he's going to go and win g2, and then our diagonal, our long diagonal is going to be very weak. So we could castle kingside. Yeah, let's castle kingside, just defend g2. And black is still struggling to find safety for his king. If he goes for d5, which, yeah, is what we expect, then I was preparing this. But then c4 is kind of loose. So, the problem is, if um takes and then the bishop takes, this knight can be taken by his bishop once the pawn opens up and double our pawns. So we might have to take him. But okay, we trade off a C pawn for a center pawn. I assume he's going to take with a piece. Taking with the pawn doesn't make sense to me. But, I mean he could. He could, but I don't think it's that great. Bishop takes. What about this? And then here, and then we just rotate. That looks pretty damn good. 
What am I missing? What am I missing? Here, we take. And if queen takes here, and we're winning a piece. So... Maybe just has to retreat. I mean, taking this looks losing because we get on the long diagonal and we slaughter him. So, bishop b7. There's no way he lets us take this. No way. With all these weak light squares, that looks terrible. So, bishop b7 is expected. And then... d4? d4 looks very logical. If takes, we can bring our knight in. Although... Oh no, it's okay actually, because if bishop b7, d4, and he takes our knight first, then after bishop takes, the rook hangs. So we're fine. Okay, I'm never going to get a better chance. So let's snap that off the board. Queen takes d4. Looks pretty damn logical. His knight on a5 is still pretty damn trapped as well. I don't know why I keep saying damn. Um, let's do it. Try not to blunder anything. Might be free is playable. Just rook d1. And let's see what he gains from that. c4. Then we go bishop c3 and this knight's going to die and then the pawn's going to die. We're going to remove the defender. If here, 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 then again we take on c4 with an attack on the queen and the knight. So the tactics seem to work out in our favour. They really do. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far and you made it 12 minutes in, which means you probably are enjoying the video, Drop a cheeky subscribe if you're not subscribed already because I post videos every single day and most of them are long form at this point. Long form in my eyes is like over half an hour so that I can get some deep explanation in so you guys can not only find it kind of um, entertaining but also educational because I feel like at 2000 ELO I'm able to explain a lot of things in a way that you can understand whereas like really high rated players might skip over things that you're not quite so sure about if you get what i mean so i'm a bit closer to you even though i'm most likely higher rated if you're watching the channel and if you're higher rated than me then why are you watching the channel like unless you're just laughing at the moves i make anyway shameless plug aside queen b3 offers a trade of queens and we can't really say no so we're just going to have to take him. So let's take. Queen takes. We could have played bishop d1, but I don't want my bishop on a4. Um, so our rook's hanging. Rook d1 makes the most sense, right? To protect this pawn. It is worth considering d takes e5, because after knight takes e1, a1, sorry, then we can take on b6 with an attack on the knight. So if he tries to retreat, the knight would take on c7, but he can just play knight back out. Wait. No, sorry. Um, here, 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 here. And we don't gain anything. But it's worth checking that line. You know, you need, you need to check that line because... In some scenarios, maybe the knight gets trapped, and then you end up with, like, I don't know, two pieces for a knight. Wait, two pieces for a rook, sorry. <laughs> or, like, a knight and two pawns. And if, if the pawns were particularly dangerous, then it might have been worth it. C4 here isn't playable, because we take it. If he takes us, then knight takes. I feel like we have a nice little advantage. The bishop's going to come to the long diagonal. He still hasn't castled. And he castles queen side. Okay. Okay. And we could take. But then he's going to bring probably his bishop out. 
to c5, and I feel like that just helps him. So I'm considering the move bishop c4 to force knight takes, pawn takes, and knight takes. And then we're threatening to get into c6, and that is not good for our opponent. If bishop c4, knight a5, that attacks the bishop. Bishop to a2, then knight takes b5, don't like that, so if here, here, and we retreat, he could just go back to b3 and repeat the position, of course, but... I don't want to do this to force the knight out. Here, knight a5. Bishop c3. Because I want to get my knight into c6. I feel like that's how we get an advantage here. You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do? We're going to start with bishop c4 because we're going to give him the option to do this. I'm going to give him the option. Now, if he retreats, then we drop back. Although, we could actually drop back to d3 to aim at e4 to get on this diagonal. Mm, he takes. Okay, cool. So, the thing is, the thing is, if we take with the knight and then pawn takes, and then we trade everything... Then a3 hangs. Although we can play rook a1 to win his a pawn. But I kind of want to take with the bishop. Because our bishop's blocked in by our pawn anyway, right? I know it's the bishop pair, but if we can tangibly gain an advantage, then takes, takes, takes. Um, oh my god. He can't stop us from getting to c6. Can't defend that square. So with bishop a3, knight c6 takes takes that looks very good a7 is under threat if he plays a move like king b7 then rook a1 and we win a7 anyway so let's take bishop takes probably not what he was expecting because you know why would i trade the bishop off if i don't have to but here because we can access c6 we just target so many important squares. But I, th I think it's probably winning, even at the cost of a pawn. Even at the cost of a pawn. Our knight is just so good. Especially because it controls d8. Because we're kind of forcing black to give up the d file to us. And if he takes on a3, he might just be opening the a file for our own attacking purposes. Which of course I'm happy with, right? Because the knight from c6 also helps to attack a7. And if he ever tries to play a6, we take. Our bishop supports that. And then we get a passed pawn that looks really unstoppable. Or at least might force um, like an exchange sacrifice or something like that. So this looks really good. The opening might not have gone perfectly. But 20 moves into the game, I believe we have a winning position against our Estonian opponent. I'm sure that's Estonia. I am the geography genius. The geography genius. I should be on GeoGuessr World Championship. I saw that recommended on my YouTube recently and I was like, what? They have a World Championship for it now? It had like a lot of viewers, so fair play. I did used to watch that, in Geo no, not watch that, play that. I like the end of geography lessons back in the day. That was pretty sick. So, now we wait on our opponent's move. Okay. I assume we do this all the same, though. Idea of taking on b5 doesn't work. Because too much is hanging anyway. But even in the future, bishop takes, supports the knight. So, let's go in. Maybe he's planning on playing a move like knight d5 at some point, but the problem is, even after he trades the rooks, with rook takes, rook takes, the bishop's hanging, so he needs to make a decision. If he goes to, like, c5, 
then just rook d7 looks like game over. It looks completely losing because we're just going to sweep up these queenside pawns. And if we can win, kingside, sorry. And if we can win e6, then this pawn gets through. And if we can freeze the knight and the king in place, then that's pretty good for us, right? Rook takes, rook takes. Again, if he takes on a3, we play rook a1 and win a7. And that looks pretty dire. It might even be better just to infiltrate, though. But bishop a3, rook d7, uh, rook f8 defending the f7 pawn. Is he holding on? We could go knight d8 check and then take on f7. That's an option. We can keep that in our back pocket at all times. So it's a nice option to have. Even if we don't use it, the threat could just um, be stronger than the actual execution. And he does take. So rook a1, my issue is bishop c5, rook a7, king d8. We can't bring our rook to a8 because his knight controls that square. We also can't really attack b6. Our attack kind of seems like it's gone. Right? So instead, I want to play rook d7 to try and freeze his position. I think this is more accurate. I also don't want to allow this knight to try and block the file at any point. Moves like a6 and not scary, I would assume. a6, is that scary? No, because we just take on f8, and if he takes, then bishop takes, and the knight's pinned to the king, so he can't take. Okay, now this move is on the cards. But then the king comes here, and the king goes there. How is he surviving right now? How is he surviving? Um, I kind of want to play this. Try and get on the long diagonal. We still control d8 though, so that's important. And we control e7 so the bishop can't retreat. And we pin the knight. So all of his pieces are basically frozen. We need to try and find the knockout. There, there. I think bishop e2, bishop f3 might be the best course of action to set up discoveries. But also just to pose the king some problems. Oh, I just realized we could take this. And after king takes, then here. Here here but then we're at threat of getting back rank mated and the d file is accessible and the c file is accessible so knight a7 king a7 rook c7 king b8 see this would be better if this bishop was on a square like f3 because then we would have rook to b7 king moves in and take on b6 could go via this square to attack here, but then maybe f5. So let's go to e2. Let's try and transfer over. That might be a bad move. I was considering rook to d8, try and force a rook trade so our knight can take there. But I wasn't sold on it. I, I don't want to trade my rook for his rook. Because look at his rook. Like it's terrible. A5. K. 
Okay. If we take, then take. That's obviously not good. So he has a pass pawn. It's kind of scary. But bishop f3. I don't see what he does. Here? Is that the idea? Then we go rook d3 attacking the bishop. But rook... Hmm, wait. This kind of sets a trap of knight takes b5 because then rook b3 bishop b4 that isn't great you know we might have let him out a bit here okay goes there now we do have a perpetual with knight a7 king b8 knight c6 but I feel like we shouldn't be going for a perpetual here. Um, here, here, here. If take, then here, there, there, there. Our attack seems to fizzle out. We can't really trade the knights. But at the same time, how do we actually beat him? There is a cool mating idea of rook d8, king b7, rook b8, which is mate. But this rook stops us from coming to d8. Also, if this knight moves, then the mating pattern doesn't work. So, here, here. Here, 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 here. Here, here. These are all forced moves. Then... Then he's good. He's fine. He's probably winning. Knight b5 is coming. Knight b5 is coming, and I don't know how we're going to stop that. What do we do? What do we do? I can't figure this position out. Um, I, mm, I don't know where the win is. Maybe there isn't a win. Knight a7, king b8. I'm trying to find a win, but I really don't see one. I really don't, and I'm running really low on time here. Um, my a7. I, th I think we're just going to have to take a draw, to be honest. Because I don't see the win. Rook d7. King a7. Rook c7. King b8. Rook b7, king d8, c8. So here, 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 here. Here, here, here. Here. There. 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 He just goes back. Do we try? At worst, it's a draw, surely. 
Surely it's a draw at worst, so we might as well give it a go. The thing is, the bishop defends the rook in all of these scenarios, so I don't, I don't know what we're even playing for, to be honest. But I feel like for the sake of content, I need to try. The king can never escape as well, because he's boxed in by the pawn, so... This can always be a perpetual. Maybe you want to do this. We don't really have a threat here. That's the issue. We don't actually have any threat. King can never go to b7 as well. So he can never stop us from coming back to a7. I mean, I guess maybe we can try and freeze him in place, but it is also opposite colored bishops, so it could make it incredibly drawish. If if I've missed something that you guys saw throughout that entire attack, then please let me know in the comment section because I just could not find anything. I maybe you were screaming at your screen something obvious that I missed or something complicated that I missed, but. Without queens on the board, these attacks are really difficult to pull off. Even though I'm not trying to, like, mate him, it's like I'm trying to win material still, you know? Okay, there, there. There, he just returns. repeat once this and this like that we could maybe go like this stop back rank mates after rook b8 Does he have a threat? I don't think so. Okay. I'm really trying to squeeze something out of this, especially with zero time. I guess rook d8, maybe we can take on f7. But this a pawn looks scary. Yeah. We're going to have to take a draw. We're going to have to take a draw. Yep, check. And he's in a box, so... There's nothing here. The rook's defended by the bishop, the pawn's defended by the bishop. We can't do anything on the dark squares because we've got a light squared bishop. This is game. Check. If king c8, don't blunder with um, bishop b7 check because then king b8 wins a piece. Yeah, we've got nothing better. Frustrating, but probably as well as we can do without just throwing the game. If I play on here, I lose, so that's a draw. Let's check the game analysis and see if I missed anything. Okay, well that was a very interesting game. I had 84% accuracy on game review to his 82. So a pretty high level game. Four great moves each. This is a very complicated opening. The idea of b4 is after takes, takes, knight takes, you have c3 with tempo, knight retreats, and d4. And you just take a massive center, right? But after knight to f6, b5, the computer wants d4? That's a ridiculous move. It still likes d5 though. Sorry, b5. Knight a5, e5. Knight d5, c4, knight c7. Knight f3 is not great. d3 is apparently better, but... Or bishop b2. But okay. Queen a4 is not good. 
After d6, we should immediately go with this. I guess maybe keeping the queen on d1 allows d4 to come with more protection in the future. D6. My idea of playing um, queen a4 was if knight to e6 to defend the knight by the queen, then I was intending to take. And if he takes back, then he has to take with the e-pawn because the queen can't take because the queen's defending the knight. And here I thought I had a better, better chances of coming up with something because our bishop's nice and open. This pawn's a bit weird. And we have nice pressure on the knight. Computer prefers black, but black has to prove it, right? So it's not easy. b6 though. Bishop b2, bishop b7, bishop e2, e6. And here castling is good. So we castle. I didn't like d4, even though I wanted to play it. Because if he takes here, then I just take back. And the d file's open and I'm happy. I think I mentioned that during the game. But if he takes on d4 first, then after bishop takes, and then he takes here, bishop takes. I don't think I was thrilled about bishop b6 or bishop c5. I felt like I was just helping him develop. And I can't take on g7 because of rook g8. I think I mentioned that in the game. Uh, bishop d6, bishop g7, rook g8. And the g-pawn hangs. So I castle so the g-pawn would be defended if we went into such a variation. Also castling can't be a bad thing, right? d5. Apparently bishop c3 is the move, attacking his knight. And if he takes... Then takes, and if pawn takes, b6 check. The knight is under attack, and so if like a move like queen d7, then just takes, 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 and you're up a piece. That's a cool tactic. Maybe I should have seen that. But again, it was a bit far in the future. Taking is okay. It's a mistake because I missed bishop c3, but it, it's still a fine move. Takes back with the bishop, which, yeah, I thought knight takes was better, which it is. Bishop takes d5, allows knight c3. Bishop b7. Take, take with the queen, which is bad because of bishop c3 again, which I miss again for the same reasons. I guess here, if bishop c3, what about queen b3? And you have queen g4, ah, because d4 meant my queen couldn't rotate. And I think I mentioned a few times, um, a move like bishop b3, when the bishop was on the board, I was intending to rotate to the king's side. So d4 meant that I could no longer do that, and allowed him to force a queen trade, like this. Because if he can't force a queen trade, his position's really not great. But he does. Takes, takes. Rook ad1. I think I mentioned I considered doing this, and if knight takes a1, taking on b6, and if he like retreats the knight, then I can take on c7. But the problem is he doesn't have to do that. He can just do this. And after rook takes a1, he's just better. It's just a better position for black. He's just up an exchange. So rook a d1, castle queen side. The computer wants moves like g4. What? It likes bishop c4 though. And my plan was knight a5, and I drop the bishop back. Bishop e2 is apparently best, and if he just goes back to b3. I did also consider rook b3. I don't know why I rejected it. Apparently knight back to a5, and then the bishop's connection is cut off from here. So black's just trying to go for a repetition and force me to take him, which I don't want to do. But knight takes d4. Bishop takes his best, c takes, knight takes, and I have an advantage. King b7. Ah, I could have just gone a4. I could have just saved the pawn. And then gone knight c6. He still can't stop me. Okay, this allows this line. Again, I didn't like this. And apparently a6 is the move here for black. Because he's going to win a piece back. After here, here, here. 
both of these are under attack, right? And if I take here, then he takes, and my rook's under attack, and my knight's under attack, and I'm losing. But what I was more worried about was bishop c5, rook a7, king c8. And I didn't see what I do here. Maybe this is better, but the computer suggesting moves like g3. It's like, what? Why are you on? Like, I can't, how, how can I call this an advantage? I wanted an advantage, so rook d7, but this is just a draw. Rook f8. It likes knight takes a7. But, after we get to this position, like, this is just a draw. Is it not? Oh, a freeze hanging, sorry. Bishop c5. And then, you know, I move the king here, 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 here. It's a draw. So I tried to make the game go on with bishop e2 to go bishop f3. But that allows a5, which is a good find from my opponent. Bishop f3. Apparently bishop c5 is better for black. Why? I guess because... But that's so weird to do. This loses to king c8 because my rook and my knight are under attack. But to allow your king just to stand in line of fire like that is very, very hard to do. So, king c8, rook d3, only good move to attack the bishop and get my rook out of danger. And here I spent like three minutes, basically the remainder of my time. But knight a7 check is the only move. If black gets more time, say I play like king f1, every other move is losing because b5 hangs. I can't defend b5. If I go rook to b5 to defend b5, then a4. And that's a problem. So my attack kind of just fizzled out. Knight a7 check is necessary. I could just come back like this and repeat the position. But I fought rook d7 and I keep fighting. And if a4 black is winning, because I guess if knight comes back to c3, then king c8, then I've got to come back. Then b5 hangs. Ah, because in the previous variation where I come back, I was attacking the bishop, so knight takes b5 wasn't a move. But here, king takes a7 is just a mistake. a4... And I need to play, what do I need to play? Bishop e2? To defend this. And if he pushes, knight c6, king c8. Rook d2, knight d5. He's coming out of his shell now. Black was winning, but black missed it, and he took on a7. Rook takes c7, king b8. Rook b7, king c8. I went king f... Oh no, I didn't go king f1 here. I went rook a7. Oh, rook d8 though. And if check, king d7 and check, then king e7 and black. The black king survives. So... What was my plan here? Well, I guess I was just going to take on f7, but a4, bishop g4, a3, take, king b8. This is a scary position, but there are actually attacking chances here because I'm covering this square. Maybe I go like g4 to give my king some breathing room, check, king up. This is drawing apparently. I was trying to create some complications for my opponent to have to deal with, and these sorts of complications are the things that I would want, because like I have a passed pawn, his pawns are falling, we have opposite colored bishops, so this bishop defends a2 quite well, a move like rook a1 allows this, and I can probably sack the bishop after a2. Can I? King h3, stopping rook g1 check, and then promotion. Bishop takes f2. And the game goes on. 
Bishop d5, push the pawn. Bishop d4, stopping that. Check, king up, push. And I have some good winning chances here. So these were the sorts of complications I was trying to create. Did I see that far in the future? No. But I did see that if the rook moves, then I could take f7. However, king b8. And the computer calls it a mistake, but it secures a draw for black. Rook b7, king c8. Here I try to keep the game going. After a move like rook d8, then we have this whole shebang. And, you know, I can try and win this. Like bishop g4 again, taking on e6, pushing the e-pawn. But my opponent doesn't allow it. After king f1, he just goes a4. Forces rook a7, a3. And here the pawn is now too far advanced for me to try anything. And I need to just take a draw. Unfortunately, I have nothing better. And that does drop our rating a little bit. But you're going to get these games every now and again where... You know, you're pushing for an advantage. You miss a certain variation. And it was a wild opening, so like, it is what it is. I've learned some more stuff about the opening, for sure. I wish I would have found um, this a4 move. I'm I'm sure I could have converted this position after this, because then my bishop does no, no longer has to defend b5. The bishop can reroute itself. If a move like bishop c5, knight c6, takes, takes, I believe I can win this game. Rook f8, stopping this with a fork. It's all the same. Yeah, they just come back. But, okay. Can be 7. Black's, black, black's position can't move. I can start throwing some kingside pawns forward. And the game goes on. But I didn't find that. And it is what it is. And we can always recover next episode. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.